Welcome. Today we are going to be taking apart a Toshiba Satellite L50D laptop computer. And this is the L50D-B. So to start we're going to need a small Phillips bit. This is a 2.5. So we'll just go ahead and turn over the laptop and uh, we're going to remove all of the bottom case screws. Um, starting with the battery screws right here. And once you have the battery out, then you can go ahead and remove the rest of the screws. All right, once you have all those key screws out, we'll go ahead and just pull that optical drive free. Sometimes there are screws underneath the optical drive, but on this model, it does not look like it. Uh, so now we can go ahead and separate the bottom case from the palm rest. So we're gonna find the seam between the palm rest and the bottom case. And then we're just gonna kinda separate the two halves. All right, some of those snaps are a little bit difficult. Um, in this case, there was a tiny one just right here in between the ports that was holding the entire case on to keep from popping off. So just be patient, work your way around, and then just make sure to get the, um, the little catch on each of these little tiny parts by the ports. And then you should be able to remove the bottom case and access the inside of the laptop. All right, now, so we have a good view of the hard drive caddy and memory and all the other parts we need to remove. So the first thing we're gonna take out is the memory sticks. So we'll just spread those little bars and then we can remove the memory. All right. So we'll go ahead and just flip up that little retainer to remove the ribbon for the in-out board. And then we'll remove the in-out board. All right, so the hard drive. I don't see any screws. like just a little kind of a rubber stopper there so uh, just free that little rubber piece so that you can lift up and pull the hard drive out of the SATA connector in the motherboard and then the hard drive caddy just kind of pops out of the hard drive all 
All right, so we can go ahead and also remove the card reader board. So same thing with the in-out board. We're gonna remove that ribbon and remove the screw to remove the board. All right, so the Wi-Fi card looks like it's just a little strip of tape. And then we'll just pop those antennas by lifting straight up on them and remove the screw. All right, it looks like the next thing that needs to come out is the fan assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the ribbon since it's kind of over the fan and just kind of work on removing anything that is in the way. So with this type connector, we're gonna just go ahead and kind of just pull on the sides. There's a little notch on either side of that connector and just work it out. Just kind of unweave it from the fan and then we'll go ahead and remove that fan connector as well. Same deal, just get a fingernail or a flat tool on either side and just kind of wiggle it out. Alright, so it looks like there's just a couple screws holding on the fan, so we'll remove those. might be stuck together. They are. Okay, so we'll go ahead and remove the heatsink screws as well. Now it doesn't matter which order you take off the heatsink screws, but if you're reinstalling with new thermal paste, you're going to want to tighten it down in the order of the numbers that are stamped on the heatsink. So it would go one, two, three, four, just to um, Help tighten it down evenly so it doesn't squirt out all the paste to one side. Once you have the screws out, you can remove the heat sink. All right, so the DC jack is nice and exposed now, so we'll go ahead and remove that as well. And same deal here. I'm just going to want to get a couple fingernails or a fingernail and a tool and just kind of wiggle that connector out. DC jazz can tend to be a little bit harder to wiggle out, but just keep trying and it'll come out. And we'll go ahead and remove the connector for the, I believe it's the webcam. So when we go to remove the display, and this side's already ready to go, we'll just have to remove the couple screws there. And we'll do the same for the other side. We'll go ahead and remove the display cable and unthread it from the chassis there. So it looks like we have the display cables uh, disconnected, so to separate the two, we just now need to remove the screws for the hinges. But for now, we're going to go ahead and remove the power button and get ready to remove the motherboard by removing the ribbons that remain. So, a lot of these are just you, know, you flip up the retainer and pull the ribbon out. Uh, the style for the keyboard is you move the connector laterally, or the retainer, and then you can remove the ribbon and you just push it back into place. And repeat for each ribbon that is connected to the motherboard. Alright, so we look pretty good. We have all of the connectors disconnected from the motherboard and now we can just remove the remaining screws. Alright, 
right, so we'll go ahead and just pick up on one side of that motherboard, give it a wiggle, and then slowly flip it over to make sure that there's no ribbons connected to the other side, which there's not. So that's how you remove the motherboard. All right, so I'll go ahead and leave the LED board in place, but if you need to remove it, it's just one screw. Um, speakers, just a couple screws. The keyboard is not removable. It is riveted into the palm rest. Um, and it does not look like the touchpad either is removable. So um, if you need a touchpad or a keyboard replaced, you're gonna need to replace the whole palm rest assembly. All right, so we're looking good. All we need to do is remove the two screws on each side to separate the display assembly from the palm rest. So once you have the hinge screws out, um, you can do this either one of two ways. You can open up the display before you remove the screws, or you can just remove the screws and open up the hinges after you've removed the screws. But if you open it up, you need to hold it underneath with your hand while you remove the display screws. Otherwise, um, you might end up breaking one of those hinge mounts. So for this case, I'm just going to go ahead and open up the hinges manually to clear the palm rest. So once you have those hinges open, just kind of tilt that palm rest up and you can remove it from the display assembly. All right, for the display assembly, um, I'm going to end up leaving this one as a complete unit, but um, we'll go ahead and partially take it apart so you can see the inside and how easy it is to replace parts on the inside. So you're gonna wanna remove these uh, little screw covers for the bezel. And then we'll go ahead and remove the two screws. Okay, right, so once you have those screws out, um, you're just gonna need to separate the front bezel from the rest of the display assembly and you can go about it a couple ways. Sometimes it's easier to get a fingernail underneath the bezel from the inside. Um, this one seems to fit pretty flush, so I might not be able to do it that way. And then otherwise you can just get a flat tool in between the bezel and the back cover until you kind of pop it out. And then once you have it started, you can go around and just use your fingertips to pop the rest of that bezel off. All right, so once you have the bezel removed, uh, it looks like for this particular laptop, um, the LED display panel is just four screws and then you can flip it up and remove that video cable to replace your screen. Um, looks like the hinges are just a couple screws on each side to remove those and then the cables are ran underneath. So it's definitely a real uh, simple display assembly and once you have that bezel off um, it's no problem to get in here and replace any of the components that you see. So that is it. That is how you disassemble a Toshiba L50D. Um, if you found this video informative or it helped you, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.